Hello and welcome to this edition of the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host for tonight. Let's have a look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. Tonight, we are joined in the studio by Ben Ulenga. He is uh, a former Namibian diplomat to the UK, former leader of the Congress of Democrats, former Robben Island uh, prisoner. Uh, of course, uh, engaging us tonight on the show on a variety of issues. Uh, ben, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. It's good the to only see. thing I'm not former to is my name. <laughs> is your name? I am still Ben Ulenga. Yes, yeah, so Ben Ulenga. Yeah, so ben, you, what nobody can ever say former Ben Ulenga. Sure, sure, definitely. Exactly. So. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what have you been up to, Tate Ben? You were very active um, up until at some stage, maybe a couple of years ago. You sort of just uh, disappeared from the radar. What has been? What has Ben Ulenga been up to? Uh, maybe your radar switched directions and it looked <laughs> the other way. Yeah. But um, I have been in Namibia, I've been living. I've been uh, mostly uh, stationed in uh, the northern part of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I'm there. Okay. Uh, I haven't been uh, participating actively in politics. Uh, I haven't been uh, sharing meetings or taking part uh, actively in meetings and so on and so forth. <laughs> but I have, uh, I'm still the Ben Ulenga that I have been all okay. the time. Okay. Um, and, and when you're saying that you haven't been uh, sharing any political meetings or anything, uh, is that an indication of you having formally entered into the political retirement space or what is that due to? Not really. My approach is that there is no uh, retirement yeah. to politics. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I understand politics, politics is a quest. What are we eating today, yeah. tomorrow, and the days after? Mm. Who, who's going who's gonna to eat what? Yeah. How is it going to be proportioned? How is it going to be, to be divided amongst who? Yeah. These are questions of life. Mm -hmm. They deal with everyday being of everybody. Not just people, actually, it even extends to all the other beings, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the other animals, everything that is within the reign of men mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is decided politically. Yes. So uh, without politics, there would be chaos. Yeah, yeah. But with politics, there is a lot of bias. Yeah. So uh, when I say without politics there will be chaos, it doesn't mean that when there's politics there is uh, justice. Yeah. There may be some kind of order. Yeah. So I have been there. I the, the questions that have that 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 have engaged me when I was actively in politics are still the the same questions that I'm engaged with. Yeah. Who's getting what? Why? When? How much of it? And how many times? Yeah. Yeah. In when, Namibia, at least. Yeah, indeed. When you, when you took that bold decision in uh, around 1999 to quit Swapo, you had very strong views about a lot of issues that you said at the time 
with the driving force behind you going out of the party and forming the Congress of Democrats at the time. Do you still hold those views that uh, indeed there is a lot of injustice, that there was a breaking of rules, and that uh, Namibia could do better? Oh, of course. I still hold the views. And uh, not only with regard to, of course, I hold very strong uh, views regarding uh, this particular subject. SWAPO, yeah. for example, is an organization because I have been, I had been a member of SWAPO for almost 30 years. Mm. Uh, uh, but about the Namibian situation generally, uh, because uh, SWAPO does not, SWAPO is not equal to Namibia. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, uh, it has been demonstrated lately. Swapo is almost insignificant when it comes to Namibia. Yeah. They cannot compare. Indeed. Now, now the, uh, there were actually talks then when you sort of then when you were entering into this space where you are now, uh, where you seem to have calmed down, you're not very active anymore. There, were, there was a lot of talk that Ben Ulenga is actually uh, doing like others, like the Deepa Mtenyas and others did to rejoin Swapo. Uh, ha have you rejoined Swapo eventually? No, I haven't rejoined SWAPO. Yeah. But uh, yes, indeed, there were talks. Um, uh, it was especially from the other side, from the SWAPO side, there were so many approaches. Yeah. Uh, many people, uh, members of SWAPO, had come to me, asked me to rejoin SWAPO. Uh, uh, some, perhaps, uh, for personal reasons or whatever, or, but, but, but it has been discussed. And there was a time when I decided I will try it, mm. but it didn't work. Yeah. Uh, I, never, I never rejoined. Swapo, I think, is not really sincere, like it has been in so many other things. Mm. It's also not sincere when it invites people to join. Mm -mm -mm. Now, that the Ben, when you left Swapo around 1999, it had Sam Nyoma as its president, uh, and uh, the party has had three presidents since, since then, or two more, rather. Tate Pohamba, uh, who came and went, and then President Hage Gengob is still in charge now. Does your opinion of the party still remain the same, even after it has gone through leadership uh, changes? Oh, yes. Uh, my opinions about regarding Swapo are uh, not necessarily opinions regarding the top leadership of SWAPO. Yeah. Uh, there are many things happening. SWAPO is an organization and it's got a lot of, uh, lot of tail. Yeah. It doesn't just, uh, uh, you know, consist of its president or, or of its top leadership. Yeah. As a matter of fact, sometimes it looks like uh, uh, those leaders who are there uh, can't do anything to change SWAPO. Mm. Uh, it's almost like a dog being run by its tail. Mm. Indeed. Now, and, and, and your, your, <coughs> your, what, what do you make of? Uh, as a matter of fact, of course, we've been talking about Swapo now, and, and I'm sure the viewers, the viewers will be asking me, but why is there not much talk of COD? What is the status of that party? Are you still a member? I will have you jumped ship. Uh, no. Uh, let me put it this way. Yeah. It's funny when you talk about membership of any organization yeah. as jumping or seizing or changing membership, comparing it to jumping ship. Yeah. I think Namibians are taking uh, this type of situation too seriously. Mm. Political parties, in my view, do not deserve to be treated with that type of respect. Yeah. Because political bodies are just organizations, uh, some more serious than others, yeah. but they are organizations which are trying to be vehicles. Mm -hmm. They're nothing more than vehicles. Yeah. It's unfortunate that Namibians uh, look at it as if uh, you know, these parties were sacred abodes uh, it's like the royal family. Yeah. If you get into there, you know, there are certain... Uh, um, Protocols. That you yes, <laughs> you know, uh, um, that you cannot 
cross there's mm. certain le and it's 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 too it's made too holy yeah, yeah. it shouldn't be like that yeah uh, there are countries or there are situations there are societies where today i say i'm in Boswapo yeah. and i quarrel with one particular point and i tell everybody that this th uh, uh, coming elections i'll be voting for for swat no for example yeah yeah uh, because political parties are just political parties yeah they're not holy cows yeah indeed Yes, so that's my view of the COD. That's my view of Swapo. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 can you put on record where, where you stand with COD now? Uh, the COD has not been speaking to me formally for quite some time. Yeah. But uh, it's an organization that I understand that I was part of starting, mm -hmm. and uh, if my vote were not a secret. Uh, I would have told you whether I, I voted for the COD or not. Yeah. But I want to keep my vote a secret yes, for, yes, for uh, the, the, this far. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I got no problem with, uh, with the COD yeah. as an organization, as a political party. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that uh, I think under the current leadership, it has been a bit dormant. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Talking of dormancy, is that what you pictured when you took that bold decision? in the late 90s to quit SWAPO and form this party, would you have really thought that by the year 2020, as we sit here, the party will be essentially non-existent? Of course, it exists in the name. Is that a possibility that you considered at the time or you thought it was really a vehicle that is going to propel to the top? I don't think, uh, I think you are taking it too seriously. Yeah. I don't think uh, the COD is uh, dead and buried. Yeah. Because these type of organizations get organized uh, within, uh, you know, just like this. Yeah. So the fact that there hasn't been uh, much uh, flags and much uh, hooting and, you know, much uh, sloganeering around the COD at this election doesn't mean that uh, it cannot stand up at the next elections. Indeed. So uh, uh, that the COD is dormant right now. It's not, I don't think it's a serious indication that it's dead. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, personally, when I look at you, Dr. Ben, and, and, and I haven't told you this before, but at a personal level, I actually considered you one of my personal heroes. And that is uh, because of your record in the liberation struggle, having been shot, I think in 1970, was it 1975, in a battle? 1976. 1976, you were shot in a battle uh, around Otavi there, fighting for this country, got captured. In fact, you got injured, you got captured. You were talk taken to Robben Island, and you spent, I, I think, around is it 15 years. No, I didn't spend. You were sentenced years. to fifteen years, but that's maybe you, yeah, that's you right. maybe you spend a few a few yes. uh, a few I years spent, than that. Uh, just close to ten years. Yeah, sure. Now, when you joined the struggle, of course, you, you there were convictions and, and and visions that you had for the country, and, and that was why you took that life-threatening decision to join the war. When you look back today, do you think this is the kind of country you have sacrificed for? Is this what you thought you were fighting for, or do you think the country could have been better or even worse? No, this definitely was not what we were fighting for. Uh, many lives have been sacrificed. Uh, I don't want to say in vain, but I want to say uh, the goals mm -hmm. of independence, the goals of freedom, uh, the goals of liberation have not been reached. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, some uh, superficial goals mm. have been reached. We have a flag. We have a country that is under local control, more or less. Uh, in in the world such as ours today, it's very difficult to, you know, to have full control of of, of national affairs because yeah. the world has become, in many ways, uh, one village. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but to a certain extent, uh, many decisions are done locally. Yes. But uh, in, uh, in another uh, ways, uh, it is not really, there hasn't really been, uh, there haven't been achievement of those goals that moved, uh, primarily moved 
people to take up arms and mm. and, and and fight for their country. What did you, what did you oh, take? What did you do wrong? Actually, sorry, what did we do wrong? Yeah, not, not yes, exactly. What did we do wrong? Not to not to achieve what yes. we exactly. Mm. We just didn't do that. We haven't reached the goals. Number yeah. one, our land literally was taken by the colonialists. Yeah. We haven't, the people haven't gotten the land back. Mm -hmm. I give you a, a simple everyday example. Every time when I come to Windhoek, I have to come through that gate at Oshivelo. Yeah. Why do we have Oshivelo? Yeah. Why, for example, is a place like the Kavango region, east and west, mm -hmm. why is it a camp fenced in and with a gate? Mm -hmm. Why is Ovamboland still Ovamboland? Yeah. Why don't we have Namibia? That why do we have all these uh, uh, camps and fences and so on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the simple answer, uh, superficial answer, would be yeah to stop this and that disease and so on. But it's not like that. Yeah, yeah. you know the deep reason why uh, the colonialists put those fences in. Mm -hmm. They were going to protect the economy of the colo of, of 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 the colonials mm -hmm. of the people who came in here and started farming from germany mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. they had to protect their product uh, mainly animals cattle from uh, being uh, overrun uh, overwhelmed by the cattle of the hereros uh, and the cattle of the Ovambos and the Kavangos and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course also they protected they tried to protect it from being uh, 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 infected and so on mm -hmm. but all this means that the white colonials took over the whole of namibia but then created camps to make sure that I within those camps yeah. they can make some economic uh, activities uh, 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 successful and, um, and what is the word um, yes su economically successful uh, 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 economic activities mm -hmm. they can farm successfully yes uh, profitably i was looking for the word yeah, yeah. yeah. Profitably, yes. if you if you open up the country and allow all the uh, herero and ovambo and kavango every body all the cattle in namibia to come into the market yeah. then the whole thing changes yeah uh, they had to you, of course you know about uh, uh, something called supply and demand yes that had to be controlled uh, in order for these farmers to be able, those new farmers, to be yeah. able to sell profitably yeah. whatever they were producing. Indeed. That is the reason of all these fences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can talk about the disease, but the disease is not the main issue. Yeah. Uh, of course, the disease also have a, a big uh, effect on the, on the, on the, on the profitability, on yeah. the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, but what was the, pr w w why couldn't the, the disease be fought at, uh, the, the, at the Chicago border? Why yeah. couldn't be fought at, uh, at uh, Katima Mulilo or at Congola or at uh, uh, Ranyemund? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, at the, at, at the, at, at Fields Treff, for example. Yeah. Why can't it be fought at the borders? Yeah. It's because uh, these people were happy with cutting a certain piece of country for their own purpose and for their own economic purpose and run that mm. and the rest was going to be non-existent as far as they were concerned that is still the way it is yeah if you want to be part of the namibian economy you have to belong to a certain to you have to you have to cross the, bo the, the, the that fence mm. the red fence it's called the red fence yes. the red fence is red a line. big uh, symbol yeah a big uh, beacon Yes. Of, of colonial mm. uh, uh, occupation, let's say, exactly. because that country uh, that was within that fence yeah. was taken so that it can serve the uh, economic uh, uh, goals of uh, of the new colonials. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you know, there's a term called. Um, uh, it's still you. It's still used even legally. Uh, I used to, uh, to hear about it when we were at Parliament. Yeah. Commercial farming. Yes. Now, what is commercial farming? Uh, superficially, superficially, sound like it's it's farming in a way that you can. I mean, it's being involved in the commercial activities of farming. Yes. You farm in order to sell. Yes. But it goes deeper than that. Mm -hmm. The opposite is supposed to be what? 
uh, communal or non-commercial oh, farming. Okay. Non-commercial would sound better than communal. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, to farm communally doesn't mean that you can't uh, sell. You can't sell. Mm. You can uh, be communal but still in get involved in commercial activities. Yes. What happened here was that uh, there is part there is a way or there is a yeah, part of the country that was set aside yeah. to run economic activities in terms of farming yes and then the main i mean the bigger uh, uh, thing here is that those parts which were excluded yeah. were not supposed to take part in the economic uh, uh, life of the country yes you can have five million cattle in kaoko yeah they will not affect this uh, economy. I hear you. Yes, I, I think and, and, and you can have even more in the whole of uh, Rumboland and Caprivi and uh, I mean, what's it called it? Zambezi now. Yeah. All yeah. those parts. Mm. And it was decided with a simple action of putting up a fence I hear you. and closing it up. And it's still like the same. I, I mean, I, I the one thing that really conscientized me that brought me into politics yeah. was that red fence yeah, yeah it's still the way it is i think you've made your point there i have one last question to you at the ben briefly uh, we've run out of time but the question is really now uh, when when you think w when you resigned from swapo 1999 you gave a number of reasons uh, one was or at least what we were hearing that were your reasons was that you were opposed to the third term of uh, Sam Nyoma. Uh, there was also mention of the Namibian soldiers being sent to DRC at the time that you were opposed to that. What is your relationship with Sam Nyoma today? And what, what is your view of, 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 of him today? Um, you should understand that personally, Family-wise, I am related to uh, Tate Kulusem Nyoma. Okay. I respect him. Apart from that, so, so he is my cousin. But apart from that, uh, we're not closely related, really. It's, uh, there's some distance. Yes. Uh, but he is. Uh, it's acknowledged uh, within the, 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 the families that we are cousins. Mm -hmm. But that's not that important. Uh, Sem Nyoma is a veteran of the struggle. As a person, he has played a lot in bringing about whatever uh, we have in Namibia today. He has been the leader uh, over most of the time that uh, the liberation movement existed in Namibia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and he, uh, uh, a lot of respect is due to him. Yeah. And I, I, I give that to, to him. Uh, I don't have a personal relationship, really, uh, apart from that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not uh, go out and have a meal together. We don't meet, uh, you know, like interpersonally. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. But but it doesn't mean that we can't meet. No. Of course. Yeah. We, yes. do, we, we, we haven't decided, uh, at least from my side, I haven't decided not to talk to him or not to meet him. Yeah. Perhaps the opportunity has just not presented itself. Indeed. Dr. Ben, thank you very much for coming to the show today. I appreciate your time. Oh, you're most welcome, but your show was, was very short. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about all these other things. <laughs> no, you'll come back again uh, when you're in town. Oh, I appreciate see. your time. Oh, okay, good. That's uh, Ben Olenga. He is a former member of parliament, former uh, Namibian diplomat to the UK, uh, speaking to us, of course, about issues that are uh, happening in the country as he sees them from his point of view. Thank you for watching.
I, Frankie, pledge to build a band of brothers. I, Michael, a pledge to define myself by my character. I, Gesser, pledge to use my strength for good. My name is Ethan and I pledge to nurture my fields. I am Aubrey and I pledge to make the world a better place. My name is Salatiel Shinedima, the Executive Director of Women's Action for Development and I pledge to mentor the next generation.